Really? Yeah, they they migrated okay. most of our old content. Okay. We won't know that until it's testing. Okay. If somebody sure. says, oh, uh, but I did look through in the strategic back. plan we have the, all the lists. Hey, everybody's here at 7 o'clock. Sure uh, yeah. In terms of how the administrator called the building. Alex, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel Frisco. Here. Mary Khan. Here. Bill Heisen. Here. Any more? Here. Any? Here. Good. Let us see everybody here tonight. Let's stand have our pledge of allegiance. <laughs> pledge of allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <laughs> Item two is the uh, regular meeting consent calendar, which includes the approval of this agenda, the approval of task cancel of the 12th of June, and the work session on the 20th, or the work session on the 12th, the regular meeting on the 20th, and the approval of the financial report for June 2023. So, motion to approve the consent calendar. I move to approve the consent is there a second? Me. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, at this point, is there a public forum? We have a couple of public hearings this evening. So if you're here to speak about one of those public hearing matters, hold off until that comes on board of fourth. If you have anything else on your mind and you wish to speak at this point, it is the time to do it. And having no one approach the podium, we will move on to item number four, the mayor's report. Really, the only thing I wanted to do was just, <clears throat> again, thank the fire department for all the work they did and all the volunteers that helped them they make the 4th of July. It was a really good time here with all the people involved. 
And also thank the fire department and again their volunteers for pumping yesterday when the river got pretty high due to all that rain. And thank Jack Maxwell for zoning and zooming around with his drone and providing pictures of the, uh, the flood condition. Uh, that's really about about it for the past uh, week. But I just want to make sure the fire department got their recognition for all the good work they did over the last two weeks, including yesterday. I see Supervisor Price is with us. You have anything you'd like to speak about? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't have anything in particular. I'm on vacation on the 4th of July. I tried to model for county staff as we try to get them on vacation as well. So I am sorry I missed the events down here. Um, we have a, a kind of quiet summer so thus far for the county. Um, we do have a report that will be um, in our consent agenda for Wednesday night at our board meeting, however, that does include the facilities and environmental services report. And I'm pleased to you know, report that once again, the Scottville Magisterial District received more than its fair share of one in five the county up in the six districts of funding for projects. So the county has been investing a lot here in the southern part. Um, also, we do have three properties on Rolfing Road that are dilapidated that we're looking to take action to, um, to address that. Uh, looking to pay that short, short segment on Blenheim Road, um, south of the Hartford River, um, get rid of that one little short stretch of uh, gravel. So, and I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen on Jefferson Hill the work that DDOT's done in the last week with the braiding and the cleaning of the ditches and everything. So, a lot of work being done down in the uh, southern part of the county, but uh, mainly here, if you have any questions for me, thank you, Mayor. Yeah. I think Mr. Payne's probably still waiting for some road improvements along in front of his house. Yeah. yeah. Licking and winning and dusting and summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have uh, everybody seen the uh, article about the uh, uh, Briary Creek Farm up there. Do you know much about that? This, uh, that uh, where they're, they're, they're going to uh, have uh, like a resort there? The, 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 oh, that would be a that, yes, that could be I, a great I, boom for our town. I mean, for that a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, that you're talking about the one that borders both with well, Mount Ida, is yes. near Mount Ida, yeah, yeah, part of Mount yeah. Ida. Um, I did have a tour there a couple of weeks ago, um, to see first off what it has to do. Oh, yeah, piece of property, all the lakes and everything on it. Um, it's still working its way up through the process. I, I kept wondering where there's no opinion on it at this point, waiting to see. Mm -hmm. How it works its way through. Um, there was an article in the uh, Daily Progress yesterday. Post, I think just yesterday. Like Dave said, mm -hmm. talking about it. Yeah. And it's not an art, it's not proposed as an RV park, so it's not bringing a bunch of uh, recreation vehicles down the road. It would be cottages, cabins, that sort of a thing. Yeah. But again, uh, you can provide some thank you for the question, but uh, all I know at this point is okay. it's an application that's working its way up right. the Okay. The other thing I want to mention, I saw some, there was something in the web today about a uh, street cleaner. Yes. Is there a, a chance that that could run through our town uh, once a year uh, or we could borrow it or something? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know the answer to the question. Uh, all of our County, we did approve uh, the purchase of the street sweeper. The one we ordered is not yet in, so the county has been renting one, unless that's changed in the last few weeks. Um, and But it's something we can easily look into. That would be great. Um, I don't know what costs might be involved in that. Um, I don't know how long it takes the street sweeper to go 18 miles from there to down here. Mm. Um, but definitely something that we can look into. Okay, thank I'll you. get back to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. One thing to make a street sweeper effective is you have to go out the night before and put signs up to say no parking after 6 a.m. Right. And uh, right. people are going to ignore those. And then we had a street sweeper a couple of years ago that came through every once in a while. And same problem. Well, the, one of the things that ties in with this is that we are, as the county, really looking to establish a public works department. Uh, because our urbanized area is so significant that uh, that it, it really requires us to take that next step. As you all know, historically, counties or rural don't provide the same types of services that cities do. In other words, the town is kind of in between, um, but the, the demands are there for us to 
kind of up our game in that delivery of services here. Okay. Is the uh, transfer station doing well? I it was this morning when I was there. <laughs> That's such a blessing. That's three times. That's so nice. Um, I did talk with some other patients who were there this morning um, who appreciated the convenience of it. Um, uh, I, I know I do. It means having to drive either to uh, Louvana to uh, Vanderlyn or all the way out to Ireland. Oh, that's great. Okay. Oh, really? Thank you. Thank you. Move into some reports from our committee. We'll just start on the end with our ARB. Um, yeah, I've been kind of observing in my close proximity the uh, church stair, the ramp and staircase going in back there. And it looks like this guy's been making good progress on it. Um, I guess those things are naturally kind of slow going, but I'm glad to see them getting the set on that. And you told me last week we'd be expecting a uh, I, hadn't heard, I didn't hear any more on that bill. I haven't either, but I'm waiting for it for the church to uh, ask for approval or come before us. So, yeah. um, and as far as events, uh, Bob did reach out to me today at Trey's office, did, and they want to kind of collaborate on some events and when he's this way in August. So, the fundraiser I did last year in the fall, I think, might be worth moving. Mid to late August, if you look at the time the press board that I do, it's a fun little cooperative event. All right. Sounds good. Any questions for ARB? Mr. Briscoe, anything from Planning Commission uh, other than what we're going to talk about? You see? Make sure I don't duplicate it for fun. Um, what I was going to mention is the survey. And the survey is a project of the planning commission wanting to get input from people both in the town, near the town and in the county. The supervisor, I was gonna mention this also. There's two ways that the survey can be filled out. One is if you're living here, you'll fill it out. The other one is if you're visiting to the area. And so we, as a town, have an interest in it. But basically, the survey is gathering information for the town's revamp of the comprehensive plan. And so it's something the planning commission worked on last week over the weekend. The town council gave input on it. But now this survey is basically ready to roll. And citizens out there, both far and near, please come and fill the survey out. Our, is, is Lincoln online? Or do they just go down? <laughs> yes, hello, I'm here. Um, so Lincoln, feel free in just a minute to add a couple of thoughts, but this process that we've been going through has really been a blessing because we have a person who is working on this PhD at UVA who has really spearheaded this effort and greatly aided the planning commission, greatly aided the town. And the survey that is just coming out is the culmination of his efforts planning commission's input and the town council's input and i believe that is ready to roll so lincoln is there anything you'd like to say first of all well, i'd just like to thank everyone for their their feedback um and yes we were emailing back and forth over the weekend and uh i'm just putting in the the last uh, few bits of information into the survey it's just really one word here or there uh regarding tourist attractions for instance and then uh the survey is will be ready to go later tonight and I'll be sharing that link with uh, Ms. Nancy Gill, and uh, we'll have QR codes, so on and so forth. I'd also like to thank um, the counselors for their feedback um, and guidance that we should have a paper-based survey distributed to uh, town residents at, at their homes, for instance, right. and also potentially an option at the coffee shop to incentivize uh, residents to fill out the survey. Those things we'll work on uh, shortly once we get the uh, digital survey out. Thank you so much. And Lincoln, can you give us again the time frame that you are looking at to have the survey return? We're looking to uh, keep the survey open for one month. As that month progresses, I'll be able to download the information and share it um, with the planning commission and town councilors if you'd like. And then we can see how the responses are coming. If we feel like we need more outreach, we can leave the survey open a little bit longer. Uh, right now, we we have uh, purchased a one month subscription from SurveyMonkey. 
So I so want to I'll update you soon on the progress on how how we get responses. Mr. Thanks Mayor, so I'm not, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure if this is if this is allowed necessarily, but I'd like to challenge each town councilor to think of anybody they can encourage to fill this out. My goal is to at least get ten people that I know, but I maybe some of you can get twenty or thirty or whoever comes, but whoever you can encourage, if you can. Twist their arm to fill it out. That would be good. Or no, it's not good. Thanks. It's so I, you, I bet I know beat y'all. You're gonna yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna post our QR code. Yeah. Up at uh, the register. Well, is that Meredith is gonna win gonna that check out. I'm gonna get them to Go do that it. QR code. Well, well, since so and again, this is a way to help us. You know, a secret as a town, we've gone through a lot of difficulty over the last year and a half as we've talked about it with different sides of issues. This is a way for everybody to give their input about how we should plan for the future. And we really do appreciate it. If you think we missed something in the survey, please, there's a place in the end where you can add something and tell us other thoughts you have. But we really, really do want your input. We always want your input, but this is a time where we're really begging everybody, please get it in. And again, Lincoln, thank you so much for your efforts and for all that you've done. And we're hoping to inundate you with survey. Glad to be of assistance and looking forward to it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any questions for our planning commission? Ms. Sines, you got anything to report on? Anything? I'm nothing to report on. <laughs> okay. Okay. How about you, Dr. Heisen? Nothing, nothing to report on, Aline? Um, just a website. Um, the content has been migrated. Um, we've been through, um, Javier, Amelie, myself have been through initial training. There's going to be some general training sessions. Um, Alex, I didn't get Aaron in this round of testing or uh, training, but they're going to be have general training sessions like on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so we can open that up to anybody who wants to be a content moderator and get trained. It takes a little bit of time to get up to speed on it, but it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm adding in um, additional content now with a hopeful release by first or second week of August. We need to get it up quickly so we're not maintaining two sites at once um, and putting meeting minutes and whatnot, making sure that all the content is in sync. Um, but it, it looks good, I think. So um, I will uh, bring that to you all probably next month and we hopefully can sign off on that and get that up and get it live. Okay. Any questions on the website? I just say thank you for your work on that. You're welcome. And you know, I'm glad you guys got the memo on the red, by the way. <laughs> uh, Mr. Payne, anything you'd like to report on? Uh met with uh Chief Jenkins this morning, uh regular Monday meeting. Um overall he was pleased with the uh, July 4th festivities, um, a few events, but uh uh, everything was handled. He was pleased with the the auxiliary members that came in and, and volunteered. Um, and he got to inaugurate the police drone, which helped in, I don't hate to use the word surveillance, but peeking around town anyway, um, during the, the fourth. And uh, was also uh, called out on a mutual aid uh, for Admiral County and the where they use a drone in a, in a case recently. So um, all in all, uh, I think he's just waiting for his new police call whenever that shows up. So. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions for Mr. Payne? Okay. Well, that brings us to the first of two public hearings this evening. The first one is uh, reference 190 Poplar Springs Road and Mr. Quick is here in the audience. Um, I will open the public hearing and ask anyone who wishes to speak towards this, including Mr. Quick, to come forward and state your name and microphone is yours. My name is Kevin Quick, I'm UK and Property LLC. Uh, what you guys have before you tonight is uh, uh, a clerical use permit. Uh, I'd like to allow the 
three weeks ago. Great, great company. Where the types of you know buildings they the this is a legit organization um, on what they do, um, and it would probably be more of a second one. So when they were the first one, the first one, uh, I mean, the, the first one the last was the porch. I'm just trying to do something that makes sense. Now the other thing I would say is obviously this is not this is an ARB type of um, setup. I, and, uh, our ARB can can be. Funny with what they think of these things, but these are not historical federal style buildings here. So, uh, you know, I may have to come back. I, I don't know how they're, going to, how, they're, how they're going to react to something like that. But what I'm saying is that is something that I would, you know, sort of that, that, that that's what they do. They don't, they don't deviate too much from that. They make six models. That's what they've got. Uh, I did get a, a, a recent email today from engineering that states that I can use. The um, uh, public order and sewer hookups that are there. That actually came up in a, in a question, and I thought that was fine. And then the guy was like, I don't know if you can use them. And today I talked to him, and he said, No, you know, you, 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 there, there was already an address there. You can, you can do that. Or the engineer, I assume, it could go all the way up. So that was the counties telling you that? No, the. Um, the water service water authority but because of because of the fact that we're being like an an R V was the question. You're not talking about you know sort of the typical recreational vehicle and he and, and the gentleman said well whoa whoa you know what were you talking about and I said let me let me explain let me send you what I'm talking about this is what I want to do and and this is what they do in other areas that connect them to public water and sewer um but I did find out later today that the engineer did say that was an acceptable type of um, use for something. And the hookups are already, there was already a building up there. So that, that's, I mean, there was a building there. There's already an address associated with that. That's why those hookups are already there. It's not that I have to pay a hat fee or do anything. I've just got to run the line to the existing hookup that has already been designated for the property. Just want to make sure that's clear. Not like there's no new, new saying or anything like that. It's already there. there but, um, one of the documents I read today on it, <clears throat> on, on your project, is that Blue Vanna is having a, they don't know whether to call this an RV or not an RV park, since these are mobile units and have wheels. And you yourself stated in one of your emails right. that they were RVs. They are. It's in so, RV, and this is the town of Scottsdale, so it's really not blue Vanna from from the standpoint of that. This is a tourist lodging permit in Scottsdale. Um, staff today spoke about that because we we're trying to get a clear definition on how we should treat it with our zoning, uh, because we have different ordinances around mobile homes or. Uh, manufactured homes in comparison to RVs. And I think uh, one of our, you've seen our staff report, but our all hands today, one of our concerns is about getting uh, water and sewer clearly uh, uh, designated with Alamore Common Service Authority, which you also spoke with, mm -hmm. um, because if it becomes one of the others, then also uh, there will be building permits like Luvanna has to because uh, an RV doesn't need to go over, but it doesn't be more of it. Um, so one of our ways we want to collaborate with you, because I do think there is a big need for tourist lodging, especially ones that don't displace already rentals, um, is to figure out exactly how we're defining these, because they don't look, when I think of RVs, they don't look like that. Right. I was um, going to make that point as well. I wouldn't think of it as an RV. And we're approaching an interesting gray zone in our RV. So part of it is me and Lincoln going through our planning commission and making sure we're answering some questions that council has had before, especially, for example, water. Um, Almar Carmen Service Authority has a fire hydrant at the entrance. And like Kevin said correctly, there was a long a residential one going up there because there used to be a house up there. So <laughs> Part of it is we want to clear up exactly how we're going to define that as a town, and then that would address it how we would approach for it in a in a village residential, and then giving it an SUP for um, tourist lodging. Uh, Do we have any guidance or um, 
Kevin, have you come across or anybody else in there reading about like tiny homes? How are they categorized? They have a solid foundation, so I assume. Do they? Because they're on wheels typically. Tiny homes are mobile. No, not typically. I think they can be. No, I, I always thought that part of the definition of a tiny home was under a certain amount of square footage and the fact that it was mobile. Well, I never heard that. I think that the, All I, the ones I've seen like listed. Again, you could also put these on the foundation. Might some, my, my point being, are we going to push this issue and go that direction? Or oh, I also see, you know, what are some of the rules and a bunch of RVs and you know, say, what are this? Mine aren't, maybe we, mine aren't much different. Yeah, right. Some you know, has to have a skirt or has to be able to access public uh, water and septic. That might be a good differentiating line there because I'm sure I don't know if regular RVs can can do that, but maybe just to have something. But unrelated to this, I'm just rambling. yeah. And I'm just I'm I have a lot of questions on that side too. So I'm not saying I know what the answer is, but they yeah. said they don't look like RVs, right? No. And uh, so, yeah, like what category do we put that in? What category are you? Um, you, you just said earlier cabins and then your application says cabins. So what are you putting in you know, as a structure where you put it on the front of the foundation or are you going to this consider is, them RV? This is, uh, this, this is an RV. It has an RV label on the credit card, but they're not designed to from them be able to be like a right. RV. That's the difference so there. It's, it's a little bit different Okay, um, so the concept that that company does with their own wheels, and they will come up, I mean, you know, the wheels are not going to be touching, it's not going to be sitting, it will be on the family foundation, if you will. Oh. Of that. But the, the, the point of that, from my standpoint, what I was looking at it is it's a substantial structure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it looks good, it looks like something that is not. Not that all these are not, but you know, the proper glass type of stuff. I mean, it, I just, I don't know if that was, that's not what I'm looking for for a tour slide and what I would do. But I want it to be a nice looking facility that, that you know, again, potentially starting with one to give somebody a view overlooking the river and then try to get some income coming in from the town of Scottsdale. And whether or not, you know, you want it as a tiny home or you want it as that, that city, but I found, I thought it was. An economical option. I didn't think it. I didn't think it would take away from anything there. You know, there were towns that did go fifty years. I mean, you know, as far as it's not something that are typical recreation vehicle. You know, five ten years. You know, you're starting to be laminated. You're starting. To, you know, it just looks like a recreational vehicle. And and I know a little. <laughs> you you can. That could potentially, you could potentially have somebody that would design that as like a modular type of thing. But then you get into focal codes and you get into some higher level codes. And I asked them at, at the plant, I said, Did you, do you all, do you all do that? Do you have any thoughts of doing something like that? Because from that standpoint, then, you know, me as an investor looking at opportunities, I'm thinking well, that could be a single family home. Somewhere on something for affordable housing mm -hmm. that you know it's been brought to the town as far as needing affordable housing, and he said that we don't have any plans. He said there's talk talk about it because of the fact that when you get into towns and areas, they don't really know how to name. It. They don't know how to right. Name, you know, it, it's a questionable. Yeah, what's what's I'm sorry. One one thing I, I want to do. Go ahead. Okay. I, I want to. First of all, I indicate I, as I have all along my support for your project, and I want to give a a picture of an idea that maybe is helpful. Uh, my father-in-law, who's long since been deceased, at one point as an attorney and as a lobbyist in Washington D.C., later in his career, his dream was to own an office boat. So it was a boat, but it was really an office. And the dock that he was on in the Gangplank Marina was basically all boats that were offices. They, that's what they were. And 
Yes, they were boats. They could technically go somewhere, but they were all basically there to be offices because that entire area, people literally went to work on all of these boats. And so I'm familiar with the concept. And I think I would say in the defense, I think we're struggling what to call it. But this concept also in areas that I go in West Virginia, that's very common to what is done in the most historic places, Seneca Rocks, Nelson, I mean, a, a lot of key places in the smoke hole. So in terms of what you're trying to do, I think if we could find a way, both the staff, uh, the planning commission recommended it, staff has recommended it uh, with the condition of being free, which is what you want to do anyways. I would, again, support it. I'm not sure what to call it. I think I would ask our interim town administrator, is there some way to come up with a term? We have a kind of that. Yeah, oh, I think we do need to come up with terms on what term we should use. Because my understanding with the RV, it doesn't require building permit. Therefore, it doesn't require a building inspector to come out and make sure electrical and all these things are, are safe and put in right. So it's, it's, it's kind of taken a turn back to where I think we've been looking at it as cabins. We knew they'd be mobile, they could be moved in or moved out, but not an RV car. I mean, you got to come to terms on what you want. What you, what you be. You're saying we might be able to call them a mobile cab? Uh -huh. I mean, if it's on wheel and you set it in there, you, if you don't put it on a permanent foundation. Is that a permanent foundation under it? Um, meaning. That you, you you start going into things a permanent foundation. So so if you were to have a a, a double wide or a single wide, mm -hmm. okay, you will have skirting that will be like vinyl, and it can mm -hmm. be block or it can be wood. That surround is nothing to do with the foundation. The foundation is how it's tied in tied on those with with but but with these, I don't think we're going to have like tie downs. Or anything like it as far as a permanent, you know, permanent type of setup. It's going to be raised, you know, on the block type of thing. And these aren't necessarily light. I mean, these are heavy type of units. These are oversized units that, that are there. I don't know the exact way you mean, but they're not like a pulling up laminating vehicle down the road. Two questions. Uh, you know, with the with uh, the metal strapping and bolt being used to to have these installed, I technically don't know the answer to whether or not they would need the straps to be put in. Um, I, I don't know if that is would be necessarily answering in the question that you guys are sort of looking like. So I can tell you, like an Amaro kiln, okay, or like a shed that comes with the skids. Okay, what they require now is, is a couple of little uh, pad ends, and then that is permanently attached to the ground. Just the stakes, I don't know if you're familiar with that. But that's what I've got. I've got I've got two of those, yeah, in my home. And you saw it, it came in on a flatbed, set down um, on a concrete slab, which is really not a foundation, right. and then it's just the metal bands, bolts. You can yeah. you can take them out. Have the same equipment come back, pick it up, and move it. Mm -hmm. It's not there permanently. Right. Uh, my second question is uh, when it comes to, to taxation, uh, I'm guessing you get taxed on these the same as you would a vehicle, an RV, a boat, a motorcycle. There would be a title, a personal property title, exactly. Like that. Okay. That would be where it would be taxed. So, undoubtedly, the state of Virginia has, you know, put this in a Classification of its own, but still um, a vehicle. From their state recreation, that remember it's an RV recreational vehicle, but it's a park model. They're not made to be moved. Once these are there, these are stationary types of units. It's defined as if you check the wheels off of it. Um, even with the mobile home, take the wheels off the hood on the foundation and all. Then it's Texas real estate. If it's still mobile, it's Texas personal property. 
Yes. But you, but yeah. It's complicated. I mean, it's complicated. Yeah. They don't always turn your titles in. I will sell a manufactured home from a double buy or something, and the title would never have been redeemed with the state. And it's, it's the title is, it can be, I, I don't want to. I, mean, I understand what you're asking, but I'm just saying it's it's a little bit more complicated. And I guess my question is, what what would you? I, mean, I see that I hear the concern, and I'm just wondering what you know what you are looking for. So personally, I have no concern. I am 100% in support of this. I think this is a great idea. I'm going to backtrack. I have no concern about the feasibility of this and. That this is a great idea and it would definitely add to the town and all of that. I am 100% supportive of it. My only concern is the wording for the SUP. And I think we're asking you a lot of questions that are, you don't necessarily, you know, understandably have the answer to. I am sure that the folks at Lancaster Log Homes had to have run into this before, you know what I mean? If they're, if they're making these homes and, you know, for how they're going to be zoned and what it's going to be called and, you know, all of that, is there any way that maybe there could be a, a phone call with our administrator and you and the guy from like, and I, that might be an easier way to get some of these questions answered. Yeah, they yeah, you know, they, yeah. Have, they don't install it. Right. That's something that I have to do. But they wouldn't know, know what to they, like call it for zoning or anything. I mean, I know that you're saying they're they're already, but they wouldn't call it a recreational beautiful. Okay. If you look on their website, you will see where it talks about you know from the zoning, you know, how how it all you know blocking you all the stuff. And but it's, it's sorry. No, 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 but but understand what you're your question. Uh I just wish I had the answer, but but I don't. I'm not quite sure. I understand. What do you want it to? Do? I guess. <laughs> I mean, do you do? Is it something do you want to scrap it and have solid stuff? I mean, I am not. You know, somebody. Yeah. I have a question. Um, the, about the three. Um, are they all going to be on the same uh, electrical and water meter, or is there going to be three separate ones? Very good question. Because I think if there are three separate, then that would that would be a mobile that would be a mobile park. And I think if they're all together, that would just be three. To me, yeah, that, that yeah, seemed like that'd be three accessory units. Water. Pardon? They'll probably be up to water until they Right, but I'm but I mean, what being as far as being classified is uh, like a unit, or are they three separate units? And the other thing with the three is um. Uh, what's your plan? You're going to do one at a time, and is there a time frame? You're going to do, like do one and to see how it works, and then put the second and the third. And and the other question I have is, I got like question about three. Is is there uh, going to be a plan presented about the three, like as far as setbacks and parking and and where they go and how they're laid out? Uh, I see you got it here, but it's right. it's it's kind of rough. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't have it technically. Okay. Laid out with the engineers on uh -huh. the location of this year and yeah. that there uh -huh. and that in parking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's something that to me is just cool. Um, I'm not going to do anything that, in my opinion, is not going to take away from the fact yeah. of what I do. And sometimes I think when you start going down one way, yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, you realize, well, I maybe should have done it this way. Right. You know, how to, when I say it, you know, I've got it, you know, I'm asking for three. Okay. Three. Is, is, is three legitimately going to fit? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a concern. I yeah. Have. Okay. Uh, and and is, is the market going to accept it? The whole, the whole point of mm -hmm. this thing and why it's mobile is if it doesn't, I can take it off. The right. Place, okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, to me, that's the, that's the ideal situation. It's no sense trying to create something that if it doesn't work, and I think it will. Okay. I'm not oh, yeah. saying I'm doing this or not, but that's why I'm going this route. If I was going the other way, then I'd be in here asking to be able to build something with you know three and, and have them touch. There's there's a way in this location to, to have them 
touch it and, and, and leave something like that. And I just, I'm not fond of uh, doing that type of development there. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I guess maybe I'm putting down the road, but for me to go in and make an investment to try to bring money into the town of Scottsville, um, I mean, I can tell you, you can't figure out how you, you know, when we want it to be underpinned or something, I mean, I start getting a little, you know, and how many? Yeah, I think. Such, yeah, I think there's a beautiful location. I think it's a great idea, I, uh, yeah. especially one. But uh, when you get up to two or three, I'm, I, I worry about the crowding. And, and I guess the other thing is, how many how many bedrooms are each of these? I sent everything to show you online. Oh, oh. LancasterHomes.com. Oh, okay. Okay, I sent it so you could look. I don't I think I. So if anybody wants to go and go to the back room, uh -huh. and you can actually, and that may be a good thing to go right. see. Yeah. And you step into these things, and then you'll be like, "Oh, now I understand." Okay. I mean, it's it's like one bedroom. Right. I mean, this this right here, the one on the left is uh -huh. one bedroom. One bedroom. One bedroom. One bath. Oh, okay. A couple of bunk beds. Okay. And one little section right there, uh -huh. and then like a little living room. Okay. Hundred square feet. Okay. We're not talking about right your house that okay. you live in. These are small types of tourist mm -hmm. lodging to where somebody can come to the town, stay here. That's hopefully that, that there's a reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to go out and eat. <clears throat> yeah. Oh if, yeah. If you have a fully equipped huge kitchen, and I'm not saying this to happen, but I'm hoping that they may say, "Well, let me go to the bathroom, or maybe let me go to a beach," and then they're spending fifty, seventy-five bucks. Into the town, and that comes back to the town of Scottsdale. I mean, it, it's it's designed. I mean, that four hundred yeah. square foot is not huge. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. Question over to y'all. Thank you, Mr. Clare. Um, question over to to our staff. So, if we were to approve the special use tonight, it's still going to have to be a site plan to go to the planning commission, correct? Planning commission is already. Well, a site plan. I mean, in other words, once so we approve it with the site plan. Well, uh, and to go back to the planning commission and your staff report on seven A is actually excerpts from what uh, Mr. Lawless presented to the planning commission, and the planning commission passed their approval on right. it. But it says that um, it's for the application is for new infill construction, so on and so on. Uh, the applicant proposed a course lodging use and to construct a cluster of three small structures on the site. I think that's what you all need clarification on. Is it structures they're going to construct or is it on? And that, okay. yeah, proposed development is three small structures like cabin rentals found in the state parks, about 400 square feet in size. And they have only basic living facilities that are used for year round. And so, I, I mean, I don't think, I think the commission, as far as I know, I think this is a good project, but it is need clarification on what is, is, is it going to be structures or is it going to be armies? Because that can change its building regulations. Sure. Right. Building right. Right. And, and from my perspective, I, I agree with Meredith and others, I'm all for it. The thing that I want to be clear on in my own mind is how we differentiate or make a decision on future projects as they come forth that we're being consistent, right? So if we're gonna call it one thing, then we need a criteria set on why we did that. And somebody else says, oh, I wanna put five on my lots. And we say, well, no, you can't do that. Why not, right? So I wanna have a nice clear answer. You're clearly mm -hmm. on the forefront of change here, I think. Also, why not? Like I, this fits, I think it's great. I think we're all in yeah. agreement that's a good idea, but it also fills, I think this is part of what you're trying to do. It fills a spot that we need to fill. Absolutely. What are we doing with ARB? What are we our Airbnb? What are we doing with, you know, tourist lodges? What are we doing and more sites that people stay in town, more tourism? I think it's a great idea. I think we're all kind of behind it. We want to open up another conversation about what is the standard going to be. What is, you know, if more of these come in, or whatever you do, I think that's fair, but I don't think it necessarily has to be used for it. No, I, I think, think you're right. I think should, you know, get going with it. I know a lot of the Airbnb decisions were 
very inconsistent, but that's not the point of anger at anyone at all. It's just no, no, it's a, organic. The track record is not necessarily consistency on everything. So right. I think for the sake of, you know, yeah. your patients and not to cut the conversation short, but I think we're all sitting here saying we, we like the idea. I think. And somebody right. make a motion. Well, and, uh, and, uh, let, me, uh, let me say a couple of things. Um, we have an ordinance on the book. Books, transient occupancy establishments have to have fire and health inspections. If we classify this as one thing, it does. If we classify it as something else, it doesn't. We need to decide what we're going to call this first. What is? What are these things? The manufacturer says they're RVs. Mr. Quick says they're RVs, but they're really not RVs. So we need to come to some understanding about what we're going to call it, because if if you open up a place for people to spend the night and it hasn't been inspected by the fire marshal or the health department, that's not good. And staff wants to make sure, like it does adhere to what Kevin has said in our comprehensive plan, that we do want to promote this kind of business. We do want to bring in revenue, um, but these are clear distinctions because it makes it for staff we have a clear approach with Al with uh, sorry with Fluvanna about building permits. Uh, we come to the service authority with some clarity about what kind of stored water they need. Um, part of it is staff might need to get some clarification quick and see what things we have to line up. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we could provide recommendations on conditions that would address some of the concerns I've heard yeah. from council. Um, that would be more than feasible to get something that is workable for the, what I'm hearing from our council also's interest in um, promoting tourism in town, and this would be a conduit from that. But doing it right, I think, right, uh, would be a it just doesn't seem to fall into a neat category like all the others do. It's just, it's such it's an unusual thing. It's an RV. It's three RVs, and they're it's a uh, it's and it's not being renovated like the other ARVs. Yeah. Do it, I mean, it's probably financially a lot more reasonable yeah. than to build a small structure, which is, yeah. I don't want to discourage that. If, these, if they look like that, I think we're all happy with it. Again, we should sit down and definitely have a conversation about it so we don't get 50 minute yeah. videos right. on the, uh, the lot down the street there. But I think that's a conversation. Right. Well, the comprehensive plan should address some of that, hopefully, too. Dan, are you, do you know if that's part of the comprehensive plan that's coming out? Sure. Yeah. 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 Comprehensive plan addressing all aspects of planning, but it's, you know, coming along. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It won't be ready in time, yeah. but it'll address future. Right. And in the larger picture, we, we, we've been uh, carried around with Airbnbs or homestay policies, but I don't think the town's ever come up with a firm policy on any of these. And this, this is kind of a homestay or Airbnb, isn't it? Somewhat. Not a homestay. No, it's an Airbnb. What this is, is it's taking into account the geography of the river. Oh, right, so right. It's not a normal spot. What right. you're hearing, it almost feels like that you guys would like for these to be all about. I mean, it's especially you should permit that we're applying, you know, that I'm applying for. So you're saying, wow, we like these and maybe we want these in other locations also. I was just trying to get a view of the river to, right. to make it. No, it's not that that I would want no, that. It's just just that and, and, or not want it. It's just I'm assuming that if it's a good idea and it catches on, then other people may come and say, hey, I want those two for the slot that I have yeah. for one, me. Right. One of the things I might say, and correct me again, I'll go to the staff on this. So once we close the public hearing, we can talk, we don't have to act tonight. We can certainly, because it sounds at least, I hear lots of inconclusiveness, like we all support it generally, but we're not clear what we're supporting. So maybe that's a simple way of saying that's good. it. So, that's good. so we support the idea, but we need clarity and some of that clarity really comes down to what do we call it? And then when we call it, we have to decide how do we do it consistently in the future? And also what the code is for that, for whatever it is. So your options are you can, after we close the public hearing, you can discuss it further if you wish, or you can devote 
to approve it, you can vote to deny it, or you can have a motion to continue it on until we have our questions answered. And motion we what's, the, what's the least restrictive route for you, Kevin? I mean, what would you like to see? Yeah, how, how, the only reason the only reason this came up, quite frankly, is out of Long City. We have a fifty million product, fifty million dollar product truck here, and it told the the pound staff at twenty seven thousand dollars probably benefit from that. I looked at that. I can do eight thousand at a less of an investment into the town, and I'm thinking, wow. You know, 50 million, a lot of people do something nice, clean, looks good, and promotes the town that's got well, gives me the opportunity to continue to work on the maintenance and say, we want the town to look good. That's exactly what I was thinking. Why not do something? And then I went to the standpoint of, you know, what could I put there? I didn't want to put a junky little, mm -hmm. let me just say, if the laminated that's out, I just worry about how long they would last and stuff like that. I'm just I'm not concerned. But I want something that somebody would stay in. And I looked at that and I'm like, wow, this is like a rusty and it's cute. We have the river, the Cedar River. That's, I mean, I'm concerned if these were just stuck somewhere in town. I mean, I don't, I mean, if, if that's what, you know, you're coming up with and saying we're okay with special use permit being done in town and if it meets this, then we will have those. I don't know if I think that they should go everywhere, but with a view, I think that maybe they should. So I guess from my standpoint, I don't want to do something that doesn't yeah. make sense with the town. So well, your, your application says recreational vehicle order. Right. You don't have any problem with that. Right. 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 Is, that, is that correct? Well, I don't know. We have tourist lines on the application. Yeah. And the and I've so got just to respond. Yeah, I got to respond too. I've got um, the land catch the law comes. Um, you know, I can all this documentation for what I was looking to do more than anything other. Um, well, hey, they don't do any other type of thing other than the parking lot of RVs. It sounds like we're trying to come up with a new category for right. this animal. And, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else uh, you want to ask Mr. Quick before we close this public hearing and make a decision one way or the other? No, so I, have, I just want to make sure, you know, what we're going to do with the driver and come in and stay at home with her. And I can mind a 10 mile field, but I'm coming up too fast, too slow. And that's what we do with this really, really short term. That's my main concern. And, uh, so is your driveway that top left corner of the you come almost like you turn come up here and yeah, then turn you. around okay. yes yes yeah, yeah. And they all every time somebody comes in, they scrape the you know, spend the driveway out and have to then scrape the driveway straight up. I was just wondering what's going you know, what's going to have to be done there to make it stop. I have no objection to that. Yeah, yeah. I, and, know, and to clarify, I mean, you can sort of go a little bit further along. Uh, Travis, we're not, yeah, and I chatted about doing something coming off that road and taking part of that thing down. This is what you're going to do. Then, what if something changes and you can't do something? I don't want to limit 
taking care of his issue because I say this is what we're going to do, and all of a sudden, you know, Mr. Rittenhouse said it'll be a problem. Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem. Okay. But you know, my point is I'd love to spend I have money allocated to go into addressing that so it's not an issue, but that sort of I mean in part in front of the horse. What I'm saying is I'm not letting them um down uh I can do by being loud there. I've got to figure that out. I don't want people going up there and spending their not going much property. I mean we know what you do, you know, you know, I just didn't want to <laughs> A bunch of people come in like off. I don't want to have clean women doing nothing else. Like a bunch of people going to grill all day and come in drunk, you know, and then all night long, all I'm screaming. I don't want that, you know. Right. I want respect for all of that. And like I told him, he can buy my property. I don't care. I'll settle mine. And move on. Sir, just a quick question. Do you mind coming up here just only just to find well, a few things to study? That's all that, but no, that's okay. I love because I want to ask you a couple questions. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I know we're glad that you're here, but we, in, in terms of taking care of just a quick, we are very much interested in what other landowners say. So, in terms of your driveway, in terms of that curve, you're wanting to make sure that if things are done in terms of you. But they do it right. I have a problem with it. I just don't want a bunch of people coming off the river, all the things drunk, and then I'm partying all night long, screaming and hollering my house. I mean, right. You know, they give me respect, you know, I don't care. And that's a problem. If I was, I mean, we was loud, I'm sure we've been loud and, and loud on the two, you know, I've been up for a long time. You know, if I was here joining property, you'll have a right on somebody who came about me, you know. So I'm not a good one to complain either. But, uh, and I'm not complaining, you know. I just want, I was like, you know, to have it really understood, you know, I just, I really wouldn't want a lot of um, screaming and, you know, right. Oh, that, that would be one of my concerns as an adjoining yeah. prop, adjacent property owner is right. that two or three people would rent one of these places, spend a day on the river, and bring 10 or 12 of their best friends on up the hill and have a party. You know, I mean, I have it down, you know, he can't help it. You know, since they cleaned it off, people coming there all hours of the night, he can't help that. And they're coming in to kick the driveway up with the sharp turn, and they just stand and just, I mean, right like this sometimes, you know, we have to take try to straighten it up. And it really does get aggravated on that part, you know. Because if he'll take care of the problem, I have no problem with it. Okay. But I just don't, you know, I, I don't want to build a problem. I just tell you all. He can buy my property and put the cabins on that. I'll back here. Three days. Yeah, the city was bringing it to the old one. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I sell my property. If we can figure out what to call it. Yeah. Let's, I, I, let's I, I, do one or yeah, two by three first. No, I'm serious. Be more way to split up. And we all sell. Okay. So I'm really serious with him. Well, let's. Well, I'm being serious. He can put, I got three acres there. He can put a follow up there. And then he's got my, uh, I got a very big garage. You know, it's a cottage. We've got some trouble up there. He can run it all well. And in the middle of the night, cottages. I mean, you have a good night. It'd be nice to discuss there. Well, let's, uh, any, any well, more comments? Well, I, I, I got to comment. Look, I think we can make some conditions on this after we vote. I, I mean, I think most people like the, uh, the, uh, the concept and and I think if we're going to follow the tourist lodging and, and I don't think we've been following that the tourist lodging says you could have a permit up to five years so we could say the permit is for two years and then see how it goes and then we could renew it mm -hmm. that's my thing or one year even uh but I I think that's we probably should have been following this all along because there's a lot of tourist lodging in fact I guess that's my my concern is does does anybody know how many tourist lodgings are in town on the council? Because I've seen, I looked online for the Airbnbs and I know there's a few here and there. I've heard as many as 10, but does anybody know how many we have? I don't know right now, but a couple of years ago when this matter came up and there was a website that said there's 22 Airbnbs in Scottsville. Well, there were eight yeah. in Scottsville and the others were spread out around the county. Yeah. So, you know, it's probably around eight. Right. Well, one of the other conditions that I was talking to Becky about this today is I think if we're going to have these Airbnbs, nobody knows anywhere about anything about them, where they're located and how many we got. I think she suggested, and I, I like the idea, is have a register. So we have at least it's registered on the town because we don't even know if they're, we're getting any money from these this Airbnb. I'm, I've heard some of these Airbnb things are under the cover. But, you know, we're not getting any money from them. So I think 
I think we ought to put a condition on the register and then how long we want this to do as a provisional and then to see if it takes I think off. it'd be good. I think it's a good thing. I mean, you know, if it's done right, it'd be, it'd be nice. It's yeah. Good yeah. Work. Yeah, because we don't know what we're getting. I mean, it's all right. new here. And, and like you say, like, you know, you don't wheel, you know, you put it in, try it, it don't work out. You, you know, you mm. just have to take them out. I mean, you know, but it's not, it's not, it's not going to bother me. I don't care. As long as, right. like I have, you know, I don't care. So, and it, you know, it don't bother me. I will remind, I think Bill hit on a point. There are conditions you can provide on this. Uh, we've spoken before um, as staff. I think you brought up a concern we were kind of anticipating from the public, a rowdy crowd coming back. Um, it would help with enforcement, especially for our local police department if you have a maximum on who can apply that's a possible condition. Um, you can also place conditions on surfaces or for parking, which we heard before from um uh, council with that becomes it's not been discussed here but it was discussed previously um but i wouldn't want to come back and be clear that uh uh that there's a definitional question that i want to approach correctly because then it would be a different conversation i'm having either with uh Lubana about what i what information i share with them it's our zoning but they'll want to know it for property rights and then with Alamo County Service Authority, because they don't allow RVs, but they're they're okay with uh, manufactured homes. These have hookups, from what I can tell from the website. So I think there's a feasibility with this SUP to include conditions that the council is interested in or thinks is for the best of uh, Scottsdale. Uh, something that is also workable and feasible, because I have heard from you guys a interest in having this type of tourist lodging for uh, our guests to yeah. now. I think we will it, so. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. And sir, your name's the public record? I'm John Bailey. Thank you. Uh, all right, anyone else? Close. I'd like to say something. Oh, all right, who are you? Oh. Hi, this is Lisa Caltabiano, uh, planning commissioner and uh, resident in Paulette Town. Pine Road. Um, I I had mixed feelings about this project to begin with. My concerns were three of them on that space and what would happen if the Airbnb market collapsed or or short term lodging market collapsed and he um, needed to close up shop. And we answer that in planning commission. We answer those concerns satisfactorily. If he ever closed up shop, he'd have to remove the units and revert them back to the original use of the land. So I was okay with that at that point. Um, in the past, town council said that you didn't want to take away from the housing stock. This doesn't take away from the housing stock. It adds to the tax basis and makes um, improves tourism and, and works to bring money and revenue into the town. Um, I don't know if there have been many complaints about the residents at these tourist lodging places over the past few years. I know um, there's an Airbnb that's operated out of the rental house that I have on Harrison Street, and I don't think there's ever been a single complaint, and, and they've always had great people living there um, who have been very harmonious with the neighbors, um, including the neighbors upstairs and I just don't really think that there's a lot of problems with those residents. So I don't think that that's a big concern and it would be in the owner's best interest to resolve that. And Airbnb is actually really good at resolving those sorts of disputes. So if there was a problem, Kevin could take care of it really quickly. Um, and I don't think it would be any different from any other neighbors. Um, goodness knows we all have neighbors that that sometimes do things that are troublesome for us. So all in all, I don't see any concerns with this here. Um, I'm kind of late to the game. Sorry, I missed the beginning of the conversation, but I understand there was some concerns about um, building permits. I'm not sure what building permits would be required for a manufactured home, but I think that's what kicks in here. Um, and water sewer hookups, I'm not sure what the, what the question was about that, but I'm here if you have any questions for me, but uh, the Planning Commission supported this, and I support this. I think it's a good thing for our town, and it's making use of land that's otherwise not being used. 
I have a question and we, we, nobody knows it here. Maybe you know, how many, how many are, uh, Airbnbs do we have in Scottsville? That is a really good question. I know we've asked that question. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I think it was something like 12. Um, oh. I mean, I could look into it to be sure, but we did establish that the number was down from previous years because there used to be High Meadows, there used to be the Chesterfield, and there used to be Lumpkins. Lumpkins was out of commission when we had this conversation last year. It's back on now, uh, but we don't have High Meadows and we don't have Chesterfield. So we are down from the tourist lodging that we have. Those were Airbnbs? Short-term short -term short -term lodging. lodging. <laughs> Just the umbrella of short-term lodging, not necessarily Airbnb. I think to Lisa's point, I think I shared with Planning Commission about this time last year. I just went on the sites and pulled who I could yeah. after putting the zip code. It was about 12. Uh, we're in a unique position where we get a total amount from Airbnb thanks to the General Assembly. So it adds some vagueness. So we could update the stock inventory. But there is a difference between the Airbnbs, these previous ones, because you'd have more, you'd have these tourist lodgings much more dense. Lumpkins has it on this space. Uh, Airbnbs usually spread out because you're using this housing stock or this apartment stock to build. Um, I think from staff, what I wanted to be clear with Lisa was that, for example, the service authority does not like RVs, but they're okay with mobile homes. And then Fulvana would have to have an application from what I can tell with a mobile home. So the definitional of what it is, is very imperative to me being able to follow up on it. Um, I don't do our building permits, but I do follow up with Fluvano or I do follow up with the service authority because I want to be a good advocate for our town. And as you know, we sometimes need to do that. So some clarity on the record of something. Uh, part of me as staff is that I would want to work with Kevin to figure out, because I do see an interest in having these units, but clarifying so down the road, I know how to follow up and best help with this uh, for the public. So would it be better because the application simply says tourist lodging to put off voting tonight until you clarify that what that is? I, I serve at your discretion and it's your vote, but I have some questions that I wanted to bring up tonight as we dig deeper with staff. Uh, and I am hearing from council some questions, but it is your decision. I'm just trying to be informative. And I think too, as Mr. Eisen having some particular regulations involved in this SUP that we need to have a sit down and get all those that down and be agreeable to those things instead of just saying, oh, yeah, we'll issue the SUP and then try to add something that was enforceable later, that's not gonna work. Yeah. Could we add this to the work session for August and then vote on it in the August meeting? That sounds reasonable. And also, yeah, I mean, the general concept seems to be, which I think we're all on board with the general concept, yeah, but it's just the, uh, some it's the definitions some and, and the condition. Some condition, yeah. Sounds so, good. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything else? Um, And the other point about taxes, um. The whoever does open up this sort of business is required to apply for a business license and pay those taxes. So everyone who's operating as an Airbnb or short term lodging should have um, a, a license right now and should be paying taxes. And if they're not, then that's a problem and you can put a stop to that. Okay. Now, I think Lisa, you're, you said you missed a part about the building permit. I yeah. What that is an RV. And Fluvanna County does not require a building permit. Therefore, no one would be coming out to inspect how it's hooked up to the water, the sewer, the electrical, anything like that. So I think that's that's where the definition comes in. That because when I look at the Planning Commission's recommendation, y'all are recommending based on structure, no more than three, and that they stuck to the site plan percent. That was your recommendation. But I mean, to for approval. Mm -hmm. But now the RV has come up. So the de it's a definition thing, I think. Okay. My understanding was that it was a manufactured home. It was, um, you know, a semi permanent structure, but it could be moved. Mm -hmm. And that was the, I thought that was a condition also that we, we wanted to make sure there was adequate parking and that we, um, that he would be able to remove them if, if he ever changed his, business model or or stop doing airbnb 
that's due to be what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we just we we're just waiting for a definition because the the actual company that manufactures them calls them RVs and. Okay, so it's a difference of how it connects to the water sewer. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Got okay. for that. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I, I did share um, Jeremy Lynn, who's the director of engineering at Adamall County Services, but already said, Kevin, from an engineering standpoint, I don't see any issue with this type of structure connecting back up to the public order sewer connections at this property. And the blue service account one zero three zero five three seven zero, and that was sent today at eleven fifty two. Okay. So, uh, more than welcome to... uh, all right. Would uh, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for some sort of motion? Uh, it's just a structural thing. I think I want to say I'm younger, and a little more rash, and easily frustrated, and definitely not. I'm mean, ignorant to a lot of the happenings as far as policy and stuff like that, but it should not be this hard to do business in our town. And I think this is a good thing to dwell on, but I also think if this was my investment, I would, I would have backed up. And I don't think that this is, should be the standard of how we operate with some of the projects just trying to do the right thing. In my line of work, I find myself on the other side of the government coin a lot, and it's frustrating and slow moving, and it has to be like that, I get that. But if you want business to come to this town, we need to figure out a way to expedite things like this. So. Well, I agree that it shouldn't be hard to do business in the town, but I also think that the definition before we vote is necessary. As far as like what Mr. Mayor is saying about are these going to be inspected? Are the you know? A, a, is there going to be a fire inspection and everything else? It, that I mean, that's a huge liability for Mr. Quick, you know, and we're not, you know. It, I, I don't think we're moving a whole lot slower than any other town. I mean, it I would get, it would get, you know, know, it would get presented to a planning commission. It would have to have a public hearing. You know, you know I, I, I think that the steps that we're taking and what we're doing is the same as anywhere. I don't I'm think we're dragging our feet anymore. I just other think people. that if we want business to flourish here, we should be looking at how to make this quicker. I understand the definition here is the problem and trying to figure out where to put it. But you worked in Buckingham for a long time. Do you think Buckingham would be happy to have something like this there? Yes, but they would they would probably be looking at the same. I mean, from a perspective, when you look at them, they look very nice. They would look very nice there. It wouldn't look like an RV or a camper pulled in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, in some mind, when you think RV, it's like pulling in the camper and setting mm -hmm. it up. This looks like a structure. It looks like a camper. Mm -hmm. it looks very nice. And I will point out, um, it's in this sort of overlay, but we do our our condition inventory from public roads and the road that you brought up is a private road so we have to do it from poplar and it's up on that hill so to kevin quick's advantage it might be a little bit too high to be able to actually see it from poplar road to have an inventory we've had buildings that are in our inventory but aren't next to a public road so they have uh their inspection for quality is limited by that uh, due to the way we have our historic uh, district. So there is an advantage, but then again, this is, there's two sides to that coin. You also want to get it right uh, at this opportunity um, because there might be limited input that feasibly ARB could give uh, from where it's situated. Uh, has some privacy, I guess I'll say like that. And that's good for them. If I'm understanding, Kevin, your situation, you would prefer it to stay on the wheels and be mobile instead of making the foundation in case you do come to the case of customers. So that would be your only reason for not taking the wheels off and putting the it up. The building is built the structure there and keep back the So they change at the beginning, 
And then they potentially can change down the road. If you're going to do three, you run the functional obsolescence, you did it there. Everything being marked there, which is about changes. You know, ooh, you know, you don't want to have that there and then it not be a business decision. Then you have something there that, like, whatever. I mean, I guess I just have to tear it down. I mean, in case in point, you got a factory over there. Well, I mean, you know, I don't want that to continue to be there. What, I'm, what I want to do is I want to be one. The wheels so if it didn't work, I could take it off or I go into where retirement going there and I could. Which I think was the condition of I had a commission approving it. I, 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 think, I, I just think it makes sense before that. Yeah. Um sorry. Uh, supervisor, oh, sorry. We're all supervisor price, do you have any insight of what the county would categorize this as? I, I don't know that I can answer that specific question. The county does have an ordinance on short term rentals. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that the town of Scottsville may have some comparable or similar concerns, but also some differences um, in where the county is on it. Um, but, but we do have an ordinance that addresses short term yeah. rentals. Um, right. I, I would just urge a little caution on calling every short term rental on Airbnb and mm -hmm. right. every mm -hmm. photocopy machine right. Xerox. Right. Um, right. It, it's the short term rental Airbnb is a corporation that advertises and people market them. Um, and they are those corporations, VRBO, Airbnb, whatever they are, they are required to collect and then transmit the taxes to the local. Jurisdiction. I, I'm sure there's a process you have to go through on that. But a lot of the other considerations that the county has, I believe, may be somewhat different than what we have in the town of Scottsville. Sure. So our ordinance may be helpful, but I would not necessarily be here advocating that the town of Scottsville adopt or vacate the ordinance. No, no. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's just about the definition of whether it's a Manufactured structure, whether it's a, an RV, you know, how, to, how does that classification I would prefer, fall? I would prefer to either our office of the county attorney or our community development department to actually provide that definitional answer for you. I'd be hesitant myself because uh, I may be incorrect in sure. what I believe. Okay, I just thought you might. Do they, the do they have a registry in, in El Mar for their babies or for the short registry. term? For a couple of years, we used a software program that we rented or, or leased mm -hmm. that allowed us mm -hmm. to go through the internet and if we identified a property that was being advertised as short okay. term rental through any of those marketing companies, yeah. we were able to check to okay. make sure. And part of that also was to ensure that those safety requirements, mm -hmm. you know, the annual safety inspection and, and the water and electrical and all of that was hooked up properly. Um, what we found over the course of those couple of years, in particular, once the corporations that do the advertising were collecting and transmitting the taxes, is that that was sufficient to meet the vast majority of our needs and we no longer needed to do this mm -hmm. external monitoring to see if people had registered. And we've, we've achieved a fairly substantial degree of compliance in that area. How about a timeline restriction? You like with our code says five years. Did you have a, a five, five, a couple of years? That you or is it is for life? The county is not permitted to put a limit on the time because mm -hmm. it's a approval that goes with the land. Okay. So it's neither limited to a particular period of time mm -hmm. nor a particular applicant. Once mm -hmm. it's approved, then that approval does go with the land for any subsequent. Uh, so they don't have to reapply. Okay. So they don't have to reapply. The SUP, but the annual oh, okay. recertification, okay. Yeah. the license. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, just a question on this to the staff. Would it be appropriate to ask our staff to take your recommendation? You've already given us a recommendation. Having heard what the council said and running it by Mr. Bolo in the in, in the ensuing weeks, as, as our council Heinrich mentioned, come back to us with a recommendation that sounds like we would pass, so to speak. In other words, we're fishing around for the right term to call it because the right term does raise the question of do we have to have inspections or not, which is a critical issue. And you make a good point. I'm sort of said that we don't want to drag this on forever, but at times there's 
Absolute clarity at the moment. I don't think there's clarity, but we all want there to be. Everybody, I think everybody here is, or at least the best I can tell, there's a majority supportive of the idea. So I'm, I'm, in a sense, I'm asking the staff, can you help us find the wording that can get it so we can make it to pass? And I think that's talking to Mr. Bowling is to come up with the term. I think the supervisor made that point that you would be consulting your lawyer for the county. I think Mr. Bowling, does that make sense to you? Well, I, I, the, only, the only thing I would offer there is Mr. Bowling typically says, well, it's what you want it to be. Yeah, <laughs> you know? he's not gonna make it. Like, no, I, I don't think he's gonna give us yeah. a hard answer. The he's gonna say. The question of the definition to me is most important, uh, mainly because if, if these structures are classified as RVs and Mr. Quick finds that he doesn't want to do what he's doing anymore, the property still has permission to have RVs on it. And maybe a new owner would buy a neighbor's property and start a big RV park up there. Because we gave permission for RVs. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So that's why I want to see a definition mm -hmm. down before we. I, I think it's a good idea, Kevin. I'm not against it. And if it was a tie vote, I'd vote for it. And for clarification, the staff recommendation was based back in, off of the planning commission recommendation. And what Mr. Lawless also had presented in the presentation of the structure, the cabin like. So we did not hear until today, I believe, that um, actually we did talk with Bluvanna County, calling them RVs and not needing a building permit. And I think that kind of raised the flag of that there would be inspections on them. Well, you probably have to have an expert on that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would think. Well, can we can we take a conservative approach and call them a structure? I approve an SUP for a structure. That would require these things? I don't think we should prove anything tonight because Mr. Heisen raised a good point about certain conditions in the SUP, and we need to talk about the whole thing as one package at the next work session. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> with that being said, we are open for a motion to be made. I move that we put off. Voting on this issue to help the August meeting. Okay, that's a good motion. Is there a second? I'm going to second it, but maybe I might ask my clarification to your motion would be with the intention of voting in August. In other words, this is not intended to be put off long so that we. No, 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 with the intention of yeah. voting until August. Yeah. Yeah. Final vote. But in I say, August. Put, when I say put it off until August, I mean. Put off the vote until the so August can, meeting so that we can speak in the August no, we're work exactly session right and yeah, have, know what the conditions are, know what the definition is, and vote in August. Okay, there's moving to second. And now, any more discussion on this? Moving to second, no further discussion. Mr. Mr. Mayor, just one comment I want to address the council to set is what she's to say exactly. If we move as fast as possible, how I can say it, I think that's August. So there's something that would go. So, so I hear what you're saying. I'm like, I'm just, no, I, concerned. I just, sometimes we have an obvious consensus. So there's a consensus. We're just a little unclear as to what to say about it. And I think Councilor Morris has a good point. If we could call that structure, but it's not a structure. It's kind of a structure. Structures. <laughs> Plural. Right now, we have a motion to defer this to August, and that's not about anything other than that right now. So it's been moved and seconded, and I'll ask the uh, interim town manager, Ms. Carter, to call for the vote. Yes. Daniel? Yes. Meredith? Yes. Bill? Yes. Amy? Yes. And Andrew? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Council. We'll make sure that this is on our work session agenda and we can talk about it, get it hammered out, and then final vote. make it happen in August. Okay. Second public hearing tonight is on the town zoning and planning fee schedule. Everybody has a copy of that. Um, Mr. 
went over this at a work session some time back. So I'll open the uh, public hearing on this. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this and planning and zoning fee schedule? And with no takers, we'll post public hearing and we'll open I can up. I can say something on this. All right, go right ahead. Um, I guess my only comment would be um, I don't know that we get enough applications for this to be meaningful income. And I think our fees are probably in line with what the county is charging. So I don't know that this is a really important endeavor for us, but um, if any, if every penny counts, then go for it. I just don't like to, um, you know, nickel and dime, and I don't even know if that's the right word, but I, I guess I'm just concerned about raising fees and taxes across, you know, in so many different ways in town. Um, and I, I just don't know that the income is going to be really meaningful to to make it count here. So that's it. Thank you. Now we'll close public hearing. And any comments from the council? So one thing in here, and I don't know if it should be in here, is, and I talked to Matt before he left about advertising costs. Mm -hmm. When you have zoning changes, don't we have to advertise? Yeah, that's and pretty much what the fees. Is that what the fee the fees cover the advertising? Yeah. So so the person who's that who's asking for the zoning, um, either change or uh, application, they basically pay the fee for the advertising. Well, we we request a fee for these um, planning and zoning changes. And then that is, we anticipated this year's budget to increase fees to cover uh, costs of advertising. Okay, so that's basically why we're- We're increasing a little bit our revenue because we expect- Right, because it is yes. expensive to advertise. Yes. Yes, okay. And then I will point out things like sign and certificates of appropriateness. So somebody just trying to change a quick sign is very low, but we're looking at uh, you can look at the fee structure and it increases in a reasonable way. We have to start having uh, staff, you know, commission you, then you have an addition of from staff time. Also, the commission is taking time to review these uh, when, when deemed appropriate that it needs that kind of uh, review, review from a commission. Understood. Okay. For I'm fine with it. For example, for an SUP, it has to be added twice for the planning commission hearing. And then twice for the council hearing. Right. So that's what how much a shot we would jump in. Uh, so twice will be about 500 right now. And then we do it again. So we do double that. And so, these fees will cover those costs. Yeah. I just want it to be a net zero. I don't want to need to make money on it, but I want to make sure that the town's not incurring costs out of their budget for what somebody is applying for. And this isn't really the way to make money. Yeah. yeah, I just Sorry. just want to comment. Right. I want to thank our planning commission chair for speaking tonight. A couple things that were brought to our attention from what she shared. I want to thank you, Chair, both bringing up the issue related to Mr. Quick and then also related to this. I think it is the intention of the planning commission and the council to make opportunities for people we're not trying to make it for some we're trying to make it so that it can happen but we also have to cover staff time that's involved with things there's a lot of staff effort that goes into large projects and so our intention is to make sure we help make things happen not hinder. and so my hope is that that's that's evidenced in this structure to take just a moment of the council's time. We haven't updated since 2001. It's more than 20 years now. So I think it was a little bit overdue to increase to a reasonable amount to yeah. cover uh, Good. advertising. Good. Okay. Any other comments? Motion to approve. I motion that we approve the planning and zoning fee schedules. Is there a second? I second. Any further discussion? I'll ask Ms. Carter to call for the vote. Alex? Yes. Daniel? Yes. 
Yes. Meredith? Yes. Bill? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, item uh, 6A, consider approval of Scottsdale Town Strategic Plan. Uh, do you want to speak to this? Yeah. Uh, or do you, you want the staff to speak to this? Uh, I'll, I can open it and the staff can give comments if they'd like. Um, so I asked you at the work session to review the planning items. Um, I didn't hear much, but I did get some comments, which I folded into the plan. Um, Bill had some changes that I thought were well made. Um, so for example, on the outcome on objective one, the outcome of goal one, improve information availability. He recommended that we add agendas, minutes, and announcements to the availability of schedules, documents, research, and decisions. So there were minor changes and upgrades. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I made pretty much all of the changes that he recommended in his, uh, in his input. There are, I would say in the interest of transparency, there were two main, I won't say objections, but maybe questions about this. One had to do with the question of, should we be taking on new projects when we can't keep up what we have with existing town projects? So for example, town maintenance or things like that. My personal answer would be, I don't think they have to be done in serial. I think they can be done in par parallel. And if we ignore the future at the expense of the present, we might be missing opportunities and potentially not growing in a way that, that we think is, you know, might get the town further ahead. I think the other, the other one was about growth. Um, growth in population and why do we want growth? Why is growth so necessary? And we've talked about growth a lot. I'd like to talk about it more in August about the concept of Scottsville as a village. A lot of people keep bringing up the concept of affordable housing. Um, a lot of people bring up issues about increased services in terms of things like mental health services or health services in general. Part of that requires potentially a bigger population base to incentivize those things to come into town. The strategic plan does build on a definition of what we call smart growth. If you will, if you will uh, recall, mm -hmm. instead of strategic growth, and the smart growth definition came out of an EPA document, which actually. Um, the EPA document appeared early on, and it was also mentioned in the small area plan. And um, the EPA, I'll read for you, the EPA published a framework for creating a smart growth economic development strategy, a tool for small cities and towns. It has a list of 50 policy action well suited to Scottsville. It opens with, rather than simply seeking to attract major employers to replace lost jobs, several cities have tried different methods to anticipate and overcome some of these challenges. This emerging shift towards place-based approaches to economic development can go by various names. This document uses the term smart growth economic development to refer to a strategy that builds upon existing assets, takes incremental actions to strengthen community, and build long-term value to attract a range of investments. So we were building on this definition of smart growth while preserving our small town culture, but growing in a way that encourages economic development, encourages these services to come into town, but in a, a thoughtful way. Um, so that's what we had documented already in the strategic plan. So those would be how I would answer those two sort of big overarching questions that people had about this. One, one thing, Council Morris, first sure. of all, thank you for all of your effort on this project. And I think it's been really helpful. I often explain to people that when our former town administrator came, he 
we had similar planning that pretty much what he did during his time as a town administrator, we were just implementing what had been done from a council. The difference was the council was very different toward the end than it was before. But I was going to mention two things. One is when we worked to secure what is the Main Creek Trail, which means getting access from Dr. Kurt, that project took about four to five years to get that. I had one of my granddaughters with me on the dock that we got uh, about a year ago. And I was explaining to her that who's, she's seven. I said, we started working on that project before you were born. And so what I'm trying to say is that there are critical projects for the town that we need to be taking action on. They take a while. That's right. Besides focusing on the current maintenance needs, which are real, but there are things that take a long time to come to fruition and take a lot of effort. So I, I applaud your point. And out there in terms of citizens who say, yes, we need to address current needs, absolutely. But we also have to think long term about where the town was. I, I also have found many times I've talked to people and they'll say, well, why didn't the town, you know, pay a dollar to get the land along the James River when we could have paid a dollar? And, and there are many times where the town didn't think about the future and didn't make a plan. And we're tasked to do both. We're tasked to be accurate today, but also to think about the long term and so thank you for bringing up that point. And also, I, I think the strategic plan is both strategic in the sense that it's big picture, but it also focuses on, on key initiatives that we want to focus upon the town. So I applaud that. Thank you. Thank you for that commentary. Um, and I appreciate that. And of course, the all the work that went into it, not just on my part, but the community uh, planning commission and other bodies that contributed to this. So this is uh, influencing the way uh, certainly that content is developed on the web. We're using this as reflecting the stakeholders that are listed in this document that is can be used as a living document for other things to guide certain directions. And so I'm coming before the council today to ask for your approval on this as a uh, approved town strategic plan. I move to approve the town strategic plan. Is there a second? Second. And is there any further discussion? Uh, the, one other comment I'm going to make is the strategic plan is is the best we can see at the moment, so to speak. So That's right. The picture it will look different three years from now, three months from now, as you, as new information comes in. But it it gives us what to shoot for at the moment, and so. Yeah. I think that's very worthwhile to figure out this is what we're targeting at the moment because it helps staff also to know where should they be devoting their time and energy and we can bring them to various things because the focus is one thing then to follow through, which is what tricky part. So it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Well, weren't there some other changes that uh, we don't have in front of us on this? So, I mean, this is uh, that's the, this is the rough draft. That's the old one that does not include the changes that you made, Bill. Yeah, or you made too. Um, yeah, but or anybody else. But I, I just think, you know, I... the ones that you gave me on the paper, uh, I believe I made them all. Oh, but they're, they're not in here. But they're you're not. You're going to put them on. Copy. Okay. Because yeah. I, we okay. have to send staff. You know, the, the okay. input beforehand, but your comments came after that distribution yeah. date, so I didn't have time. Okay. I didn't want to say, oh, hey, hurry okay. up, well, make well, all these copies. I just want to point out a couple that I made and did not hear. Yeah, one, here's your copy. Well, one, one is, uh, you know, and it relates to what Kevin is, it's not increase short-term lodgings because we don't even know how many we have. We have 12 now, I guess we know, but it's review, review the need for short-term lodgings because I, I think down the road, we need to know how many is too many and how many is not enough. So I think- I think it might a, be worded evaluate yeah. or something. Um, and then uh, the, the other one we had is an increase in occupancy, occupancy, occupancy revenue, you know, increase the occupancy. In other words, not increase the population, but increase, uh, increase the number of houses we have. Um, and there was one other I had, but, I, but anyway, I think uh, the, one of the things I, think we need to do is uh, make sure that we have maintenance in here 
and also increase the um, commercial. I'm not sure if that's in there, but I, I mentioned that having increased the, we have a lot of vacant built, several vacant buildings. So I think that should be a strategy to get our, all our buildings filled. Uh, we got some at the shopping center, we got some downtown to try to, uh, that should be a strategic plan to, because our commercial is really what drives this town, you know, given getting the uh, businesses fully running. Anyway, so that's in here. So, so what you have here is not the uh, final copy. One of the other things, uh, thank you, Councillor. Well, one of the things I was going to mention. This goes back to our intern Lincoln, and Lincoln, I hope you're still there. One of the things that was important to him in this project is the strategic plan is also informative to the comprehensive plan, and so as they're coming together. It's a helpful step as the town has, or if we pass the, it's informative to Lincoln as who helps lead the planning commission in the town through the process of the overall comprehensive plan. So thank you that this is well timed to help in the project of what we're also doing with the comprehensive plan. Yes, hello, Mr. Grisco. Thanks, thanks for mentioning that. Um, this will help guide us, I believe, in the future. Thank you. Any further comments? Ms. Carter? Alex? Yes. Daniel? Yeah. Meredith? Yes. Neil? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Item 6D. Uh, uh, Ms. Carter has the floor. Would you like to explain 6D? Yes. Um, for consideration of hiring part time temporary summer office assistance. Uh, who's also a full-time student. Uh, Only members can start volunteering in our office July the 3rd uh, to volunteer because she, she wants to help. She's following here to help and also because no official action had been taken on hiring her. Uh, as previously, I think we talked about as a full-time student, summer temporary help, you can hire them at $10.20 an hour and just part time. So um, she has been doing excellent work in the office. I believe that uh, we all can vouch for that. Uh, it's just proved to be extremely helpful. As a matter of fact, uh, as I transition out, I feel good that she's there until we get a clerk. If you get a clerk, I'm always saying we until you all get a clerk hired that she will be a big help to, to all of you. But um, yeah, she's been uh, working about four hours a day. Uh, so I'm asking you all to consider, as I would be cutting back my hours, next week will probably be my last week. I hope to maybe convince your town administrator to take a few days off before things get really hectic. And uh, I could fill in for that, but as you know, I don't get the benefits, retirement, or health insurance. And so there's savings there between that and the free town administrator and also the quote savings right now. We get that feel. So I would ask y'all to officially consider hiring on leave uh, for at least $10 and 20 cents an hour um, to work part time temporary health and office. Okay, do you have a motion? I would like to make a motion from Mr. Mayor that we do that, that we hire commonly for four hours a day. And I guess my only question is, I'm not sure if we, if it's the right procedure to pay back pay or not, so to speak. I'm fine, whatever we think, of, whatever the will of the council is. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and include it in your uh, motion, hire her with pay retroactive to July 3rd? If, if that's the will of the council or starting today, if that's the will of the council. And it's been the best interest of the town. Okay. Put it, yeah. okay. That's a second vote again. You need to take. Okay. After you vote to do it, if you vote to do it, there's a second motion you need to take because she is one of the council members. Okay. So the first motion is to hire with the uh, pay retroactive back to July 3rd. And is there a second? You seconded it? I'll second. You second. Can we include in the motion 
uh, best interest of the town. Yeah. Is, yeah. That has to be a separate motion. Yeah. yeah, okay. So this is the hiring motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Well, I'm not sure. What it is, the motion. is it hiring it as of today as or next August? July 3rd. Oh, okay. How long would you do? It should be here till through August. Yeah. As long as we need her. No, well, no. I mean, she, as a student, is uh, I'm losing my voice. If you're a student and you graduate, you might, you know, leave. I mean, I, yeah. We can cross that bridge. Yeah. 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 I mean, this specifically is as a summer. Because, yeah. Well, that's what the top of the mayor said. He said, as long as we need it. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Is it summer? Mm -hmm. or will it run into the fall? We don't, you know. I think. Oh I'll say my motion is till September. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. And and with the option to continue if needed. Yeah, the option to continue if needed. And are you saying that I have the retro thing has to be a second motion? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So the first motion is do we want to hire her? Yes. Okay. So I'll I'll say that my first motion. The first motion is do we want to hire her? That's my motion. I say. Okay, motion move second. Any more discussion? I, th I think that hiring should take place as as soon as Becky leaves, uh, because that's when we need her. When right now we've got plenty of staff, and I think we should. Well, we don't have plenty of staff. Javier is doing two jobs. Well, if he's going to have assistant, and Ms. she's been helping him. Right, free. I have a problem with the retroactive. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Hold on, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, hold on for one second. So, Bill, just so you know, we're not, all we're saying right now is we're saying we're hiring her first. We'll get to the money later okay. in just a second. So, this is just are we hiring her? So, well, it's $10 is included in this vote. Right? $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $
Second. And now discussion on that one. All right. um, what do we think? If I would feel more comfortable if there's a end date to retroactively pay, I think that makes sense. But a nice bit of one, here's where it started, here's where it ends. Um, I don't want to necessarily limit it out. Obviously, if you only have four, I think that would kind of make it a little more sensible to me, at least. But, uh, well, if I understand correctly, the $10.20 an hour hiring is only a Part time summer and student. But the thing I'm thinking of is so it turns into something that's just more of an actual position or more of something that, you know, and that 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 for working for 10, 25 an hour. We couldn't legally. So we that have, would be we have moved, moved to hire her as a summer. Mm -hmm. uh, like yeah, the term summer term. employee, like a summer job. Is that in, when, when, when are you free to sell? Uh, but August 21st. So um, that is when I officially start. So I guess that I mean, that last week would be, I don't know if that would be, you know, September would start the week after. She wants to say August 23rd. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'm I'm going to say if, either, if the class is started on 23rd, I'm going to say to the 25th, that's Friday. Or say for September or for through summer, if you want to yeah. do part time through that. You're in the council. It's, it's still part time. So why don't we say through September 1st? Yeah, that's fine. recommend that. I think I'm quote very often by being about making sure by staying within our budget um, while also having sufficient staff to hit responsibilities. So as uh, Becky and me talked today about making sure that as she off-brands, I have the availability and the capacity um, within our appropriations to be able to off-brand and have only. I can provide an update on what I'm thinking might be the timing with uh, hiring a clerk in September 1st would work with a deadline of early August 3rd, um, giving a few weeks there might be a good transition from getting somebody in and ready and saying yes to being our clerk um, and only returning to uh, school. The only thing I was going to say about this, though, is we're, there's a little bit of an undervalue here because for $10.20 an hour, that's just her cheerfulness. She's mm -hmm. leveled out mm -hmm. when she does yeah. the work. So I, I think it's we're getting a steal. Do we know the, the total cost it'll be for the Two months, I guess it is, what, to the town. How much the town is paying for this? I just wondered. Uh, I mean, I, I guess my my thing is uh, budget and also procedural. It's considerably less than what's in the budget. My it's procedural and budget what we have and, and what we're spending and and the other thing I, I concern with me is a little bit is priority too. Is like I mean I wish she she knew how to do a weed eater more than anything. I think that's a, more of a, a priority than uh, than the office. But anyway, I just wondered how much we're, no. we're, we're using that. You, you're the first one to complain when we don't have minutes or when, you know, things aren't getting done or getting put on to the- Yeah, but that, would, that doesn't fall on her. That falls on I property. know, but what yeah. it's doing is right. opening up the time for half a year to do those right. things. Phil, 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 to get a deadline, I worked 60 hours last week. So, and I didn't touch my minutes because she did my uh, minutes. Okay. She, didn't do well. okay. she is an absolute asset to the office to be okay. able to keep the responsibilities and the demands that you guys have at council while I try to work okay. the clerk. I, I just, I want to be okay. candid yeah, that yeah. this is the this okay. is capacity of hours and I would wholeheartedly suggest the council to that we need a little bit more staffing as we try to transition and get maybe rolling and get a clerk. Um, I will put my neck out. <laughs> okay, any yeah. further discussion? And moved and seconded that we establish a compensation of ten dollars and twenty cent per hour retroactive to July third. No more discussion. Then we'll call for the vote. Alex, yes. 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 No. Nope. McHugh. Yes. Thank you.
Okay, there's one more step the comments we have the current family members uh, that our attorney provided to me, and that step is that there needs to be a unanimous motion uh, that um, a unanimous vote that the best interest of the town is to be served despite a personal interest, direct or indirect. Yep. That, that's just a motion to say that, unanimously say that, although you're hiring a family member, that it to serve the best interest of the town. And, and just, just so I follow up on that, a thank you uh, is one of the reasons that I think this is really in the best interest of the town isn't just because of the amazing job she's doing. What she's actually helping do is keep the door open for somebody else to do it in the future, too. So it really is, in a sense, we have needs that have been screaming at us, and this has been a blessing to fill it and to have you there. Thankfully, your mom knew who you were, and she could recommend and put somebody in the place that we would have taken a while to find. So you give us a really quick fix for a short time period, but you also leave the door open for somebody else to do that in the future if, if we view that as a success. And I, so I would simply say, for, in good conscience, I think it is a good decision for us to do, even though it is a family member of our council. Would you like to put all that into a motion? My motion I, is, I'm sorry. I, I just want some, can, can you repeat for me um, what the unanimous vote has to be? That the best, best interest of the, of the town. town is to be served despite its personal interest, direct or indirect. Okay. By hiring. So this has nothing to do with whether we want the job done. It's that it has nothing to do it, with that the payer, the, this you know, is in the best interest of the town, regardless of the fact that she is right. related to them. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's in the best interest of the town. That would be my motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I just like to say, I, I think you've done, done a great job and I think I like your demeanor and everything, the way you operate. And if, if things go well, I would encourage you to let us know and maybe we could look at that and put it into next year's budget and if, for next summer. So it's not uh, hitting us from behind. That's my only concern is that this has not had been planned. It was, it's kind of spur of the moment. And, uh, but I, I, what you've done is, has been admirable. And I appreciate what you've done. The one one thing I would comment on that is about the being planned. When we originally talked about the candidates and having somebody come in part time, and we interviewed a part time candidate, it was always in the plan that the money that was saved would go to potentially have somebody in the office to cover four hours. That was discussed way before uh, we even thought about having someone come in in you know a particular person <laughs> fill that role that was part of that proposal that the hiring committee put in front of everyone so no, I, I right. would just i would just we say that that wasn't i don't remember that and i, I guess okay. we didn't have a motion about that either did we it was part of the discussion yeah. when we yeah. all met on the hiring yeah Issue. Oh, okay. and, and back to the interim town administrator. So, in a sense, again, this motion is is not whether it's agreed pay or not pay. Or anything. It just simply means we think the intent is good, and, and I think it's the hard to say. The yeah, the intent of the intent of this is good. This part, and we put do need to include in there that this, that it, despite a personal interest direct or interest. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. Alex? Yes. Dan? Yes. Meredith? Yes. Bill? Yes. Helene? Can I vote on this or do I recuse? You can vote on this part. Okay, yes. It doesn't have to be in there. Yes. And Ed? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um. Javier, you want to take number seven there? Uh, I would like to follow up a little bit on 
um, end of fiscal year. So that you know, have been working since May on trying to get our audit back. So it was shared with us at the end of the week. It's in your packet. Um, Becky, I'm very appreciative of taking time last time. She worked on a additional report that we have included uh, in the log for audit. Uh, you want to go over the little bit? Right. Um, of course, the, the audit was over six months late getting it. So we were already, this was sort of ending 22. And we've already just ended 23. So you have to think back in here. But um, the bottom line is that you all still are retaining your triple A rating, which is great for your finances. But the, the budget did show that the audit did show that the town expenditures were one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars forty at fifty five one hundred and thirteen no fifty five more than you brought in in revenue. So I started looking to see, you know, what went, what went wrong. And then we found that in May of 22, the council did actually approve some supplements to the budget that um, Matt brought you. But the auditor evidently being there at the end of May did not pick it up in the minutes. So I did a spreadsheet putting those supplements in there to at least to demonstrate that you didn't spend more than was budget and expenditures, but where the oversight was, was there was not enough appropriated up in the revenues to cover it. And the reasons for this is we found good reasons. Um, there were some grant projects that were paid for out of that year that the money didn't come in in that fiscal year. And you will see that this year uh, in the one that we just ended. 23 might look really good for you all and bring you back 23, 24, bring me back in line with everything. Also, there was about $100,000 spent on litigation fees that was in the administrative budget, but in the revenue side, nothing, you know, possibly should have said we're going to have, we have this unexpected, not operational expense and need to take it out of the reserves. So it was just a matter of those steps. Uh, another thing we found was it showed the uh, police department overspent hundred and good deal, a lot of money. And we knew that wasn't right. And due to his very good reports, they were very accurate. We started comparing and I emailed the author and said, you know, we don't see where you took out any um, DMV expenses. And I didn't, haven't gotten a response from that yet. But the DMV, we found the DMV expenses was actually in the police department. So when I pulled that out, of course, the police department actually did not spend all of their budget. So there's a lot of back and forth. But the bottom line is for that year, you did spend more than was brought in. But there, I, I see justification. Uh, and a lot of it, you had the COVID money in there. So it was a little bit. It was quite a job to try to figure out what was going on. And I think when he gives his financial report, uh, or, you know, demonstrate that you all did in 20, June 23 with some cash. So it, it some of the grant money come in for this budget year, the 22-23. You also all budgeted $60,000 revenues for DMV. We got a little under $20,000. So see, it's going, it's, it's going to offset some of that. Let's put it that way. Uh, but the, 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 your fund balance did get reduced to this fiscal year um, by $113,055. Yeah. And hopefully as you get better, get, you come to terms, because the, the year you're starting now probably shouldn't have any major grant projects in. No, we're wrapping up grant projects from last year. Uh, for example, the police vehicle procurement mm -hmm. was exceptionally hard. So last time I talked with Jenkins, we're hoping to wrap up this end of this month. And then once we have it in hand, all complete, we can ask for reimbursement. And then that will go back in the <laughs> long-term fund. Correct? Yes. And, and for the 20, ending 22 also, 
that actually you, you spent 170 some thousand dollars more than you brought in, but you started out with 58,600 and some dollars to start the year. So that helped take that down to 113. But, and, and possibly we feel like that was maybe some, some COVID money in there. You see your biggest expenditures in tourism and community development, the things that you use grant money for. And we'll wrap those up. So it's a heads up that we look very good coming in this year as we wrap up. I think so. And then we haven't slowed down on grants for this year. So there'll be some clarity. Um, I got some suggestions about some bookkeeping and recommendations to improve that now. So it's even clearer for everyone. But uh, that's what our that's what our year looks like um, playing uh so next year looks pretty sound physically, Phys yeah. fiscally, fiscally. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it should start coming back around. Your COVID money is gone. Mm -hmm. You you paid for most all of your grant projects, so now you're only beginning grant money back. Yeah. Okay. So and you have eliminated DMV, so you don't have that expense. Mm -hmm. But um, but you said you told me we had a, we're going to have a surplus of eleven thousand. Is that in this budget or is that? No, in the budget that you all approved oh. in May, mm -hmm. I believe it... your difference between your proposed and budget is a lot of guesswork. Mm -hmm. Your proposed revenues and proposed expenditures was 11000 okay. So Okay. So that, that's a reserve you would okay. think through the year that you uh, might want to do. That would be where you would take it. Otherwise, you have to take it out of your, reserve. your okay. uh, right. investment money. Okay. That's good. Um, but the, the report did advise that they encountered no problems with staff having and making available all the records necessary to form the, the budget. So that's real good. That there was no problems. So they found everything in order. Good. So I, I have okay. I have two questions. Are we set up for the next time? Do we have a procedure or an agreement, a fiscal procedure that we separate out? The normal operational money of the town from any grant or supplemental money that we might get COVID equivalents mm -hmm. in the future. Is that's that our current practice? And that's what I'm that we'll do yeah. moving forward. I'm working to set up like say you have a dot grant revenue, right? And then on the other side, dot grant expenditure. So it's right. not like the, Right now, everything our previously too was grouped into either state or federal revenue. It didn't say this is a grant right. to adopt for this. So I'm looking on the procedure for that. So okay, so we are making progress on that front. And then um, planned versus actual, mm -hmm. Javier. Do you expect that once we get the full time town clerk hired and up to speed, mm -hmm. that we will be able to get even maybe quarterly? plan versus actual where we are budgetarily wise so um, well we could go into hiring after this i'm looking for somebody with stronger budget skills right or uh, accounting skills although it seems like you've had good skills to get through the audit but I, I'd, I'd like to pass it along <laughs> right is what i'm saying yeah so, right depending on how it goes best laid plans as they say um I think our financial statements, what they provide uh, monthly is a uh, what our folks are looking at as our, as our tools and what we've spent and what we have, what we've brought in and what we have been spending out. Um, what we could do is quarterly as a staff report have an update and kind of give like a um, how's the weather That's kind of right. report. Um, that would be useful, maybe taking a little bit longer that session to discuss um uh, quarterly would be good because we can look at it right. from a 25 50 75 right and, then and make sure that we're on target yeah. uh, becky to your point it is some artwork in doing a budget right but we want to make sure when we track it we get a head heads up if we're coming up against a rough spot or if we've had emergency um spend that you know will put us in the red that we get in front of that yeah. um, and i think i pay close attention to those becky knows how diligent and how well i know, uh, I, know <laughs> I know our budget better than i know my own budget 
I just kind of stick to what I know is stay frugal at home. And I we have to, I, we have to stay frugal here. But uh, and it takes the art for the way the bills need to be paid here in the town because yeah. you you know you get your meals tax a certain time of the month. You get your business tax annually, and so sometimes they're they're stretched if you don't get any revenue. Right. Bill. So he plans out, and it's really creative to get your bills paid right. because there's really not a lot of cash flow to start with. That's one of the reasons the county went bucking and went plus your tax billing, so we have cash flow all through the year. So he he does an excellent job managing that. We have a new cash flow, which is has existed always like that. And what I used to do is have constant communication about how it looks. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we start up really flush going into the beginning of the fiscal year because bank franchise also comes in at that moment uh, on top of our business license. So what I can do is order uh, communicate that to you. Uh, I think it will have good timing because we'll be following up on grants yeah. uh, starting this summer going into the fall. Even if you can't do it until somebody gets on, I would like to see that as a goal for that person coming in, that one of the requests would be to do plan versus actuals, at least on a quarterly basis. Yeah, right towards. Yeah, you're, you're thinking about the financial reporting gives you every month that budget. And uh, most of what we're sending to your owner or under. Mm -hmm. So, but sure. it's much more detailed than what your audit is. I mean, your budget is that you are creating. Right. Very detailed. Yeah. And I don't know that we need to go into yeah. all the line item specifics of each one, but have some sense, like not we're on target for 25%, but more a little bit more detail. Like that first page budget sheet has sort of higher level categories of spend it would be nice to have uh, at yeah. least some some detail broken out of them. And getting some insight into that, maybe I can communicate with that and get a temperature of what would be the easiest way to communicate it. It's all there to how we present it. Right. It to be uh, consumable like that. Right, and to make it easy for the person putting it. I mean, we don't want to make it onerous on the person getting that data together or the people that have to read that data. And then if later when you go home and you start looking at this uh, summary of accounts that he provide you, I think you get that every month, but where you see from 22, from June 22 to 22, 20, so June 23, you see the town LBIP in 22 to 213,825, and the 23, it dropped to 161, 149. And my understanding that through the year, you all approved $50,000 out of your account health equity to cover the It was the vehicle, right. And we said that once that grant came in, we would put those yeah, funds back into the account. Does, yeah. And this is a long way to say when we approach this in about six months, uh, remember that's what we had to do <laughs> back then, and that's how it's going to work. And that's why you set it up like grant for vehicles, right? Vehicles. Right. Then when that money comes in, you know exactly what. And you can track the revenue that's been, you know, sort of put in there to cover it, mm -hmm. and then get move it back and where that number is, right? Yeah, and that's one of the favors that he has been nice enough. Yeah. Yeah, I just still want to say again, actually, um, been here in my third month. I am amazed at what the town does. Thank you so much for getting us back on track too. With the because the financial responsibility is so so important. Any more questions? Hog Air has advertised a couple of different areas for a town clerk. He's received some responses. He has the authority to interview these people and make a recommendation to council but he would like to be as open as possible. And he would like a couple of council people to join him in any interviews that he might conduct. So I was thinking council member Morse was headed up, headed up the first 
um, round of applicants for the town administrator position and council member Hines headed up the second half. And if you two would be interested or available or have an interest in helping Javier with uh, interviews or prospective town clerks, that would be great. So think about it, you don't have to make a, you know, you don't have to say yay or nay right now, but uh, you two have the experience, most recent experience of uh, gathering information on possible candidates for open positions. So we'll leave it at that right there. So anything else anybody else has on their mind? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.